All right. So where we left off the last video, I was paying attention to where my creature is physically interacting, physically touching the environment. Because unless your creature is floating in the air, there's going to be such a, such a spot. And it's this foot that's underwater. So what I did is you want to understand what the components are in your layering. And I have this glacier that's overlapping. And I have this chunk that I internally composited from back here of where some water was broken. This same kind of still water. And then I have this layer of water here, which is at 80% that is covering up the foot. So I get to show how much that foot is seen underwater. But there's also a reflection that would be in the water. You can see that from these form breaks. So there's lots of factors to play with. But you first need to understand your layers, right? So this form break works pretty well. I can use clone stamp just within this form to give myself some of that reflection. And so to do that, I'll use clone stamp in a different way than I did for assignment two at a low opacity, nice and soft, pretty big. And I'm just going to, on the same layer, clone stamp in some of this lighting. So it gives me the impression of not just a form break in the water, like it does there, but also of a reflection in the water of this leg, especially where the highlights are in the leg. Now light logic is a whole other area, but it's something we can play with and see that we have control of, even if we don't get it exactly right. And then I can softly erase away with my eraser. even in these areas that I, I know might get covered up. But that gives me a believable kind of entry of this creature's foot into the water. And that's what I'm looking for. If I need to clone stamp a little bit more, I can. Just smooth some of these transitions out. And then because it's on its own layer, I can play with the adjustments of that layer, of that form break in the water. Like I can up its highlights, make that, that form break a little bit more violent. Like the water is being disturbed a little bit more. And see if those levels adjustments help. So there's my, my foot going into the water with the little form break. Let's lessen that opacity. And I like that I can kind of see the foot underneath. And then I have this big iceberg in front. And this creature is going to be casting a shadow onto that. And that's maybe a little bit sharp. So maybe I'll take my lasso immediately and change the profile of this iceberg a little bit. Like so. And then maybe I'm going to burn the edge of it a little bit. So this is just direct burning on the environment.
that helps it to make a little bit more sense. I can also direct burn into the water itself. And I can direct burn a little bit on this iceberg that's overlapping the creature. Because this light source is behind, and so this would be put into shadow. Now all of that is directly burning onto this layer because it's a foreground layer. And I'm going to do a little trick where I use my magic wand on this foreground layer and I select the empty space around it. And then I'm going to use my move tools on the selection. So just my, my arrow keys and I'm going to push that selection down a little bit. And I'm going to bite away at it in different directions. So I get rid of that little black lip. So though it's there in some places, which I can take care of with my eraser. So this is an opportunity to improve your landscape as well. And you can always resubmit assignment one after this proving ground. You can do that up until the very end of the semester. And I want that sharp edge. All right. And what's great is it looks like he's going to be like grabbing for it. Okay, now this is the new skill I want to teach you. You know how to directly dodge and burn something. And mostly we've done it with the midtones. See how my tool is set to the midtones. So when I when I burn down the shadow area on this little glacier, all those midtone shadows, those kind of middle grays, those middle blues, they get darker, but the highlights stay just as bright, and the shadows, darkest shadows stay just as dark. So if I want to adjust, you know, from that to that. If I want to darken the highlights, I have to change the setting to be on the highlights. And then I can actually take down some of these bright whites as well. But notice as I do that, everything goes towards kind of a muddy gray. And so if I want to put saturation back into it, then I have to go to the sponge tool. So these are all the direct tools, and I want to saturate back into those highlights, and then it will make it that kind of nice light blue. Right. And then if I want to take saturation away, I can set the sponge to desaturate. And then it will evenly take away saturation, not just from the highlights, but from that layer everywhere. And if I want to directly change its shape, I cut it out differently, I can do that as well. If there's something that's just not working for the lighting, or if I want to reveal more of my creature. So lots of options with directly dodging and burning. The new skill is to indirectly dodge and burn using what's called an overlay layer. And I'm going to do this on my creature, because as soon as you dodge and burn, you lose options you lose content you push highlights darker sometimes too dark and so in order to adjust the lighting on the creature itself on top of my creature layer i'm going to create a brand new blank layer that i'm going to say edit fill with 50 percent gray at 100 percent normal mode so it looks like this that's right on top of my creature love layer, wherever your creature is in your landscape. The reason it's called an overlay layer, a non-destructive overlay layer, is I can dodge and burn onto this gray layer, right? And if I burn, the middle gray will get darker. And if I dodge, the middle gray will get lighter.
Now, if you set it the blending mode, the layer mode from normal at the top to overlay, then everything is that's 50% gray is exactly the same. But where you dodged and burned it, right here, you're going to see that it has an effect on the layers underneath. So if I zoom in to where I did just a little bit of dodging and burning, you can see how that starts to affect the lighting. So let's do more of that. So this is just for my creature and every layer below my creature layer. So if I want to burn down some of the highlights in the face, I'm going to use the burn tool on the midtones. Maybe on the highlights. But especially on the midtones. And you're going to see it's going to start darkening my creature in those areas. But if I turn off my overlay layer, it's exactly like it was before. It doesn't hurt it. So this is why it's called non-destructive. Darken the underside of the bill. Now, what are the disadvantages of doing a non-destructive overlay layer? You can't use the sponge tool on it because all you're doing is adjusting middle gray, right? So it's not going to take saturation away and it's not going to add saturation. To do that, I would have to go directly to my, my creature layer. But for now, I'll change it to normal mode so you can see what I'm doing with the tools. For now, I'm just burning in the head on this non-destructive layer and then setting it to overlay so I can see the effects it has. And because the light source is coming from behind, it's reflected very heavily, but I want a lot more shadow on the belly, on the back leg. That's going to help the arm and the hand stand out, which is good. Also, because it's doing it from middle gray, I can really only change the midtones. So I can't burn down solid white without going to my creature layer. But I want you to do as much as you can with overlay layers. I can burn the underside of the tail because it's going to catch a lot less light in this condition. And then if I ever want to lessen what I did, I can simply turn it to normal mode and then use clone stamp. There's lots of ways to do this. I can just paint with middle gray to basically erase from my overlay layer, but I can also just clone stamp it and at different opacities can augment it. Right? So if I just went a little too strong there, I can take it back. I think I'll burn a little bit on this hand. And a little bit on the foot. And I want to burn a lot of these highlights in the hair little roughs. All right, now for that's non-destructive editing using dodge and burn on an overlay layer. Very important skill. In the next video, we'll talk about how we can make more dramatic changes to the creature itself in ways that are destructive, but we'll do it in smart ways by making duplicates of the areas we change. So it's all kind of good layer management. And then we're going to add some texture fills to really sync our characters.